The Vetus Bowpro line of thrusters runs from 30 all the way up to 400 kg force. They deliver that power with brushless engines, which means there's no carbon dust to worry about anymore, which was a common complaint with old-fashioned DC motors. The brushless engine also makes it possible to have proportional controls, where you have exactly the amount of thrust you need at that moment, you can run them from zero all the way up to 100%. In the previous video we have looked at how to select the correct components for your build, in this video we are going to build that system. In this video we will create a checklist of common items that you need to be aware of, such as how to connect the DC side, how to make sure that the VCAN network combining all of the components is working correctly, how to make sure that the boost function operates, and how to set the stern thruster as a stern thruster, and how to configure the panels. When I start a build I always make a checklist out of the manual with items that I should be aware of, such as where to get 12 volt for the VCAN network to make sure that there's a common negative terminal between all of the battery banks, the boost function and the 12 volt network power. To make sure that the stern thruster is set as a stern thruster, much easier to do that on a workbench, this is definitely one for the checklist. A good item for the checklist is to make sure that the stern thruster is set to a stern thruster. This is much easier on a workbench because you remove the blue cover, there's a small switch underneath that you set to bow thruster or stern thruster. This is also a good moment to install those thick, heavy DC cables. It's much easier to do that on a workbench. Other items on the checklist are the configuration of the control panels. If you have multiple steering stations, such as on the flybridge and in a wheelhouse, you have to make sure that only one station is active at a given time. There can be only one skipper on the boat. You can also have to tell those control panels whether they're controlling the bow or the stern thruster. Boost function, make sure it's connected directly to a power source, so for instance the 12 volt starter engine or a 12 volt house battery. Also make sure that all of the chargers are set to the correct voltage. If the voltage isn't high enough, the boost function won't detect that there's a charge present and it won't start charging the 24 volt shipside system. We are going to start our build with the DC side. The two batteries on the left are put in series so they generate 24 volt for the bow thruster and for instance an anchor winch. The 12 volt battery on the right is for engine starting or for instance the house or service battery. We prefer the house battery, engine batteries can have quite a dirty 12 volt, especially with common rail engines. The second cable we're installing is the common negative terminal from the minus 12 volt to minus 24 volt. Make sure that all of the negatives are connected together for the charger, for the boost function and also for the network. Because this also has the boost uh, amperage running through it, it needs to be a thick and heavy gauge cable. So the main cables running up to the bow pro are plus and minus 24 volts and a 12 volt cable all the way on the right to the boost function. On the bow pro we have plus and minus 24 volt directly from battery pack and the 12 volt boost cable. Once the power, the voltage is high enough on the 12 volt connector, it will boost, the bow pro will boost that voltage up to 24 volt to charge the battery pack. When you're hooking up the minus cable for the 24 volt system, make sure, check if there's no connection from minus to one of the motor terminals. What we've seen in the past is that when crimping on these terminals, sometimes they bend a little bit and then you can get a connection from minus 24 volt to the motor terminal. It won't do damage, we've protected the system against that, uh, but you will get a, an error in the system. So make sure that the minus cable is not touching any of the motor terminals. And also it's a very good idea to install these thick heavy gauge cables on the workbench before you move the motor into the ship. The network has to be fed with 12 volt. The best battery to use for this is a 12 volt house or service battery. You can use a 12 volt starter battery as well, but if you get uh, the occasional error, then possibly the 12 volt isn't clean enough, there's noise on the line, then use a 12 to 12 volt converter. If you have a 24 volt ship, 
and you need 12 volt, the best way is to use a 24 volt to 12 volt connector. You can use one of the two batteries of a 24 volt bank to generate 12 volt. Normally that's a bad idea, but the power consumption for the network is extremely low, so it won't do damage to the batteries. But make sure that for 12 volt you use the battery with a common negative, so it's actually 12 volt on the line, instead of the other battery which will be on a higher voltage level. But again, the best way is to use a 24 volt to 12 volt connector to power converter to power the network. The next step is to install the control panels. Make sure the whole network is set up as one continuous string. No loops, no T-sections. You can use very short T-sections, but try to avoid them. Once they get longer, they can generate noise on the system. The order in which you connect items is not important. Just make sure that you start at a 12 volt power source and end with a network terminator, a small resistor. So here we're going to first connect a control panel. From the control panel, we go to the 12 volt source. So that's the start of our network. Now, if you get errors in the network, it might make sense to build this network very close to the bow pro, just to check if the network is not causing any issues. So take a 12 volt battery, take a control panel, and make a very short network very close to the bow pro to check where the errors might come from. In this case, we're gonna do a normal build. So from the control panel, we're running a cable up to the bow pro, and we're going to place the network resistor, the small terminator, on the bow pro. Again, we could have gone from 12 volt power source to the bow pro, to a control panel, and then to a network resistor. But here we've put the resistor on the bow pro itself. If you want to add a second control panel, uh, make sure that the network stays one continuous string. You don't want to connect these as a T section. It doesn't matter whether you go from power source to panel to panel to bow pro or from power source to panel to bow pro and back. Here what we're gonna do is run from 12 volt power source to the control panel on the right to the bow pro. So we're gonna remove the resistor from the bow pro, extend the network at the bow pro to a control panel, and then we're gonna install the network terminator, the little gray block, into the control panel. So that is the end of our network. If you install a second control panel, you have to make sure that it's set to a second steering station. Otherwise, both control panels can be active at the same time and you only want one skipper on the boat. So in the next step, we're going to configure the left-hand control panel so it knows it's part of a separate steering station. So here the final step, network terminator into the network. To configure control panels, you have three options. One is which helm station, for instance, the flybridge in the wheelhouse or an aft steering station, only one control panel should be active. If you have a bow and a stern thruster, you have to tell the control panel, configure the control panel, uh, to inform it that it's controlling the stern or bow thruster. If need be, you can reverse direction with the configuration menu as well. Step one of the configuration is always the same. Switch off the panel, push the on-off button for 10 seconds. During the first six seconds, you can hear a DDD sound. Then the panel goes silent for four seconds. And then you hear another beep sound, which means the joystick, the control panel, is now in configuration menu. The second step can change. If you want to select a helm station, you push the control panel to the right, keep it to the right and push the on off button to tell the control panel it's now in helm station configuration mode. And by tapping the button and checking the color of the lights, you can check helm station one, two, three or four. Once you've set it to the correct uh, helm station, push the on off button once to confirm the setting. 
if you have a stern thruster in the system, step one is make sure that the thruster knows it's a stern thruster, so remove the blue cover on the thruster and set it to stern. And the second step is to configure one of the control panels to control the stern thruster. To do that, the first step is again the same, switch off the panel, push the on-off button for 10 seconds, but now push the joystick to the left, hold it there, push the on-off button briefly, and now the joystick is in stern or bow thruster mode. And by pushing to the left or to the right, you tell the system whether the control panel, whether it's controlling the bow or the stern thruster. Store the configuration by pushing the on-off button once. Sometimes you have to reverse direction of thrust. To do this, the first step is the same, push the on-off button for 10 seconds. But now instead of pushing to the left or right, you just click the on-off button twice. And the red LED or the green LED will light up. Push the control panel in the direction of the LED which is lit and store the configuration with one push of the button. And now you've uh, reverse direction of that panel. We've just installed a second helm station, so now we're going to configure the panel. Hold the button for the last beep. Push to the right, tap the on-off button, push once for steering station 2, set the configuration, and now if you activate the system, it's controlling the thruster. And the other station is now not active. To get control on station 1, push on-off twice, station 1 is now active, and 2 should be deactivated. To get control on station 2, push twice, and now station 1 is deactivated. If you want to add a stern thruster to the system, there's a couple of steps that you need to be aware of. Make sure that there's a common negative connection between all of the battery banks. So the battery bank for the bow stern, for the bow thruster, the battery bank for the stern thruster, the battery bank which holds the boost function and the 12 volt power source for the network. Make sure all of those negatives are connected. Here we're extending the network to include two steering stations and even a third steering station which is controlled by a single joystick which operates the bow thruster and the stern thruster at the same time. It makes maneuvering very easy. With that third station you can uh, rotate the boat, push it sideways very intuitively. Quirin is now hooking up the entire network and he's just making sure that everything is in the system in one continuous string. The order in which you connect items is not important. Make sure that you start at 12 volt and that you finish with a terminator so you can run it the way it's most convenient for your boat. Now you have to con configure all of the control panels. The bow thruster on steering station one is very straightforward. It's set like that from factory. But on steering station one, we have to tell the control panel uh, on the most left-hand side that it's controlling the stern thruster. And we've just shown you the procedure. The other control panels on steering station two need a bit more configuration. Both of them need to be told they're part of steering station two and the stern controller needs to be told it's controlling the stern, so you need to configure that twice. The joystick at the third station uh, is only told that it's controlling the third station. It knows whether to control the stern or the bow thruster, depending on how you activate. Quirin is now switching on the system. There's power on the network. And now we're going to check operation. So on steering station one, stern thruster operates and the bow thruster operates. He's now activating steering station two with a double tap. Stern thruster is operating and steering station one is deactivated. And now checking the third steering station and with one joystick he can operate both stern and bow thruster at the same time. 
and the other steering stations should now be deactivated. In this video, we've shown you how, why a checklist is important, the 12 volt power source, the boost function, how to connect the VCAN network, how the boost system operates, how to select a stern thruster, and how to configure all of the panels. I would like to thank you for your time and attention, and I wish you a lot of successful builds.